Hey, Jonathan Lawrence here with uh, Trey Solberg. And uh, we refer to him as the brain and me as the brawn. You want numbers and technical spec? That's him. You want to beat a camera up in the field? That's me. Uh, actually, this is a, uh, a pre-release model of the Panasonic DVX200. Some things I really like about the camera, first off, it's got a beautiful LCD screen right here that gets a pretty good image. It's a little hard to see in the daylight. You might need a courtesy or something like that to be able to see it in broad daylight. But you can always go right over to the uh, eye cup over here and look right into it. It'll shut this off and give you this pretty standard function. And this is a nice little eye cup in that it's not so large that you have to kind of scan around when you're looking into it. Um, and it's not too small to not see. Now, let me ask you a question about that. How's the diopter on it? Because I know your eyes are... Yeah, I actually, I actually wear really thick glasses normally. Um, and um, I have run into some trouble where diopters don't really work for me. But they won't focus to my eye. Mm. Um, this one does, which is nice. Good. And it focuses to your eye. Yes, it does. It is a fixed lens, good for run and gun. You've got, I think it's 28 to... 167 or something. 167 like that. Was. Yeah. That would be off. It's probably a 28 to 350. 23.50? Would be the 35 millimeter equivalent. The 35 millimeter equivalent, okay. Don't hold me to that. <clears throat> we did run into some concerns while shooting cinema style focusing. That may just be on the pre-production model. We had a little bit of focus slippage mm -hmm. uh, where we would mark our focus. We'd pull it a couple times and then we'd pull it again and it was completely off yeah. from where we just pulled it. Missed it by that much. Missed it by that much. That much. <laughs> you know, it has a 72 millimeter filter thread on the front. Uh, 77 seems to be a little bit more uh, universal these days, but one step down ring and you're there. We actually threw an, uh, a pretty beefy ND on here today. It has ND filters that you can kick in. Quite a few. Yeah, but we were doing a, a tricky shot with a whole lot of uh, light in here. We wanted to get as wide open as we could, so we threw a uh, ND 12 on here and no problems. It stacked right in, no vignetting. We, we were zoomed in a bit, but uh, no vignetting. Looked really good across the board. But it's got a lot of really great features that you would expect from Panasonic, and certainly uh, it's very menu intensive. Um, I'm hoping a lot of that will be able to put to some of the outside user buttons, um, and I'm sure that's the case because they have a lot of user button setups on here. As far as operating it, it's lightweight enough. I sh when I was shooting in Japan with it, I was able to walk around with it in my hand all day long, and not even think twice about it. You can just carry this thing around all day, your arm's not gonna get tired. It's very nicely balanced, so it works pretty well on a tripod uh, once you balance it all to the tripod. What are some of your thoughts on the camera tray? Well, I liked it a lot. We, we went in and we looked at certain aspects of it for audio, for picture enhancement and adjustments, and um, first off with audio, because my roots started in audio, uh, you can map the inputs to different channels. So in other words, you can use a shotgun on input one, and then map input one to channels one and two. So you can do the zero dB on channel one and minus six dB on channel two if you're only interviewing one person and you need to have adjustments so that you've got a safety on two. It seems very good from a size standpoint. It's about the size of what my EX1 used to be. Uh, not any bigger, not any smaller. Um, uh, it doesn't seem real plasticky. I mean, they're still working on it a little bit, I'm sure, but it's nice, it's solid. Uh, good mounting for the microphone with shock mounts. Uh, Let me interrupt you real quick. When I first got a hold of this pre-production yeah. model, I, I did feel like, oh, this is so plasticky. So I, I did think, oh, is this, I hope this is just a pre-production model. But as we got into using it more, mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this is really a solid camera. It's a really good build. Well, you and I both started in the Betacam days. So uh, for us to pick up something like this, you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't go, wow, it doesn't weigh enough, so it's not quality. It is quality, it's just they're using a lighter carbon fiber type material. I'm assuming that's what it is. I, I don't think it is actually carbon fiber. I think it's just made to look like that. But I don't think it is actually carbon fiber. Yeah, they're faking us they're out. They're faking you, faking you. Right. Making you think it is. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I liked it. There. It's the old switcheroonie. <laughs> we ran it through my Atomus earlier this morning and uh, it's the new Shogun. And I've got the 6.4 uh, firmware upgrade. So we went full 4K into this. Uh, we did do it with HDMI and not SDI because uh, like many of the other cameras, I believe this only outputs 4K on the HDMI output. Uh, it looks very nice. It looks clean. Yeah. You have a choice of 8-bit or 10-bit on the output of 4K. However, internally, it's only 8-bit. Other image quality things, what did you, what did you like? Um, well, I like the dynamic range. I, I've heard between 10 and 12 stops, I think it I, I think you're getting, you probably are getting 12 stops. We didn't really gauge we didn't that or measure, measure that or anything. It, yeah. But you're getting a nice smooth filmic image. We did shoot a little bit in V-Log. We, we, shot, in, we shot in the Cine-like Cine D. 
and the Cine Lake V and V-Log. There was some noise in the, in the V-Log. There was a little noise in the V-Log. Um, we, we just did intro recording, so it was 8-bit. And I dropped it in DaVinci Resolve and turned some screws on it pretty well. And if I was doing an HSL key to try and do sky enhancement or replacement, you know, unless I got that key just right, you could see several stages of banding in there. Now, I just widened my key a little bit, and that seemed to fix most all the problems. But in, in the black and white mode, when you're showing just what you've keyed, you could see a bit of noise in there. Nothing bad, and once you switch back to color, it, you know, it's virtually undetectable. And if you're doing a lot of work that's you know, not going to get heavy grading and stuff like that, I doubt you'd even notice it. Now, even for heavy grading, now, take a look at this. We did this shot in the absolute worst environment we could possibly think of. Yes, we we have a blown out sky in the background. We have uh, uh, Trey standing in the shade, partly in the sun with direct overhead lighting. His head is blown out here. His shoulder is tapped. Then we have these uh, plants and bushes that were in complete and utter shade without a bit of light on them other than ambient spill. And, and just to see what, what we could do. We shot it in, in, uh, the, in the V-Log. Um, and, and with a few minutes, uh, it wasn't an intensive grade with a lot of... One live, hour. <laughs> one hour later. Yeah. Um, a few minutes. I'm slow. <laughs> a few minutes. Six, 60. 60. 60. <laughs> um, we were able to, uh, or Trey, we meaning Trey, was able to uh, uh, pull it back to something usable, which is good to, good to see. It was a good test. It had every bad element you could possibly imagine in a shot, including Trey which you just don't want to have in any shot. No. So I put him in several, as you've seen. And, and as you can see by the shot, he did a pretty nice job pulling it back to at least something usable that a client could use if they went out and shot something or you know screwed it up completely. Not that you would ever do that. I would do that. Okay, I've done that. I'm sorry. One thing we did leave out is it records on SD cards. SD you know, cards. Very fast SD cards, but you can go 4K right onto an SD card, a single. So it's not doing two cards at the same time. So you get, if you put 264s in here, I'm guessing you're going to get close to an hour, hour and a half. And if they're going to relay, you could, not that a lot of people want to span anymore, but you could relay onto uh, or span onto the second card, pull the first one, put a freshie in there, hand off to your uh, DIT, and you could be offloading the first card while you're recording on card two, ready to span over to card three. And in theory, you could keep going all day that way. I think at some point, someone's going to want to say, launch, but yeah. The brain, the brawn. See? <laughs> um, Excellent DP. Tech dude that reads too much on the web. <laughs> you read? Sometimes. I like the web because it has pictures. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a whole other thing we won't talk about either. You know, one of the handy things here that we always want to get to these days is waveform, mm -hmm. which is good. Zebra, because you want to be able to turn those things on and off quickly. Uh, steady shot, which is very good. It's got an OIS button on the side. And those are back towards here, and those are labeled. Now, you can change them out, but it's neater if you leave them with what's labeled on there. You have four user buttons right here that are very handy, because you, you can set them up for anything from uh, focus transition to uh, scene change, all sorts of handy mm -hmm. things. So once you configure this camera in a mode that you like yourself, it's really easy to get to just about everything. One thing we did notice uh, on the camera, which, which is a problem in a lot of cameras, uh, is that there's lag. And uh, so, for instance, if you're rolling and you put your hand in front and you pull your hand out really quick, you still see your hand in the image for a moment. And that becomes a problem, especially for you. You work with a lot of clients on external monitors yes. and things like that. So how does that become a problem for you? You, you basically, uh, you're good with the directors and some, some producers. But if clients from the agency are there, a lot of times they'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. His, it's all out of sync. I, it's not working fine because if they're wearing ComTech, they're hearing the sound instantly, but the processing time it takes to get the glorious picture from here out the back to the monitor is typically uh, four to six frames. We measured this camera at about six frames. There's a severe jello effect in this, especially in 24p, a little less noticeable in uh, 60. Also worse on the longer end of the lens than it is on the shorter end of the lens. Nobody's gonna be put on the tripod and wiggle the thing back and forth. But if you're shooting in a car, and shooting you know, across the seats, and you're shooting right out the window, and there's, it, it's going to bend. It's yeah. good buildings. It's, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to bend. They're, uh, at 24p especially, not quite as bad at 60p, but it's still evident. Again, if you're on the wider angle of the lens, it's not going to happen as bad or as noticeable. Now, I will say the image coming through this lens is, is quite good. It looks really nice. Uh, it has a nice feel to it. The zoom is smooth. 
the rocker is variable, so you can adjust it and you can lean into it. Um, I didn't give it a super scrutiny, but it doesn't seem to have the lunge that some cameras have. When you start, you know, they kind of lunge and then you find your speed. You can just ease into this and it'll start and then you can control your speed for a zoom. Important thing, this is a micro four thirds in here. So it does have a relatively shallow depth of field. It's not a 5D, can I say that? Sure. Okay, it's not, <laughs> it's not a full a, frame. It's not a full frame sensor. It's not a full frame sensor by any means, but it does have a lot of the same qualities as a micro four thirds. Think of it kind of like a fixed lens AF100. In case we can't go down that road, that is a Panasonic. I can do that, but. And I'm wearing a Stetson. Stetson hat, any check more, it out. Any it's more branding we can get in here? No, no, I think we're, uh, we're, we're pretty covered. <laughs> out of the box, it is one meter minimum focus. It does have a macro mode, which allows you to do extremely wide angle shots and still be able to do shallow focus. Uh, I did this shot of some bamboo uh, screen that, while I was in Japan, and you can see uh, this, this is fully wide at 28 millimeters, and um, I'm very close to this object here, and uh, I've got it at about a 2.8, and you can see how nicely it falls off into the background on the bamboo sticks and how crisp it is in the foreground. I'm also zooming in on this in macro, so you can see that's holding up pretty well. And you've also got uh, inputs and outputs that are very handy here. Full-size B and Cs. Uh, you've got SDI out. You've got time code in or out, uh, which is a mini switch. And then you've got good old composite video out. Why well, you'd want to use that? You know, maybe it's a legacy system. And then towards the back, you've got a full-sized HDMI out, which is very handy and it uh, allows you to come out. Now, on this particular camera, the only way to get full uh, uh, 4K out of here is just the HDMI. The SDI doesn't actually pass that. It down converts to uh, 1080 on the way out. Got a nice battery compartment. The battery goes right back in here and slips right in here. It's very nice. Yep. Seeing battery well. lasts about two hours okay. uh, in continuous use, depending upon how much you're zooming and things like that. So they did kind of an interesting thing for your XLR inputs. They put one up by the shotgun microphone, which makes a lot of sense. And then they separated the second one down to here by your other jack pack. So if you're running an extra pack or something else for your lobs, you can stick the pack down in this area and you don't have cables running all the way across the camera. Also for mounting, this is really great. You've got the two quarter 20s and two three eighths things here. So you've got a lot of options for mounting right here, which is wonderful. So given the history of cameras and where they've come from, the thing that I think I like about this is it's very familiar to handle. Yes. You know, we've all kind of gotten the DSLRs or, or this camera or that camera, smaller, larger, everything. And I think Panasonic is um, perhaps trying to make something that is user, really user friendly, and this is in, in a lot of ways. So keep your eye on this camera. Um, check out a lot of the footage that's starting to come out on this. I think you're gonna be really pleased with what you're gonna see. Uh, beautiful 4K cinematic look, 4K directly to the SD cards right in the cameras we mentioned. I think a lot of people are starting to get really excited about this. Jonathan Lawrence. Trey Solberg. And we'll talk to you later. One yeah. one pickup. Should we do the fake talking now? We should do now, the, 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 the fake wall. Yeah, the fake wall. Point to things. Yeah. Well, good. This table's a mess. We didn't clean it off. Yeah. <laughs> are we seeing all that or are you cut in pretty tight here? I mean, it's, uh, you know, well.